Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vivek and uh, I am your instructor for the IATA class and uh, today we are going to see or maybe have a, a conversation about uh, International Air Transport Association that is IATA, that's right. So uh, IATA in such is not so complicated as you think it is because every uh, every industry has its own body governing body right um, like uh, even the railways is having a central team um, or any other transport logistics is having its own central team uh, for example let us take Amazon Amazon it's having its own headquarters where it will be headquartered properly then only all this logistics would be going to and fro just like that aviation also needs a proper authority body which will give it uh, which will give guidance to it all airports and also airlines two things airlines and airports IATA governs these two industries I'm not saying when I'm saying these two industries I'm not like dividing these two things because these th these two things are interrelated it, it needs to be told what to do and what not to do for example I'll tell you to, um, now we have a pandemic situation pandemic means what like the coronavirus so due to coronavirus the government has given a strict uh, gu uh, guidelines to all airports and to all private carriers of what to do like uh, while boarding the passengers or like uh, while handling the baggages of the passengers or while you know disembarkation of the passengers what they need to do for example just imagine if there was no governing body what would have happened it would have been total chaos total chaos means like they would have literally doing things on their own will they will not even ask for uh, the guidelines because there is no governing authority so each airlines will even do whatever they want for example indigo might be doing a certain kind of boarding and uh, this air asia will be doing some other kind of thing so iata is a very powerful organization which actually gives straight guidelines to all governing to all uh, airports and to all airlines okay just just register this fact in in your mind then after this thing after you register this point in your mind i am assuring you that you won't have a second thought about what is iata now when you end this video you are going to have when when a third person is asking you what is iata you at least will have an idea that it is a very powerful aviation body that's it okay so this is the uh, plain way of explaining what is iata now we'll uh, before getting into a uh, history of aviation i know that many of you have lot of doubts which uh, in a very unfortunate situation you are not able to ask me directly but there will be arrangements for you to ask those questions to me so in that situation i'm breaking down uh, the history and all those things in a very simplified way so that you will understand the, uh, those things and when you have been asked to ask questions to me you can ask that questions okay so here it goes like aviation started during the right uh, right brothers um, uh, time like when they you know used to uh, be, uh, like experiment with wooden planks uh, like they used to carve out things and you know put a rotor like that fan kind of thing on its two edges uh, edges and you know they used to push and it then you it, it used to propel and then you, it used to take off so you know history is really crazy at times i even i find history really crazy even from einstein to all the other people they were crazy people at their time so was right brothers right brothers were a crazy set of people brothers who thought that humans can also fly like birds so having this thing in your mind let us step into the history of aviation 
So if you can just see in your textbook, the first uh, authorized testing was done in December 17th, 1903 by Orville Wright who flew his wood and fabric aircraft for 12 seconds. Just imagine, just 12 seconds, just 12 seconds. Just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's it. That's it. But that was like a big thing for them because we, if we jump, we can't stay in the air for even for a second. But this was a big achievement for them. They at least flew for 12 seconds. Flew means not they went up to the uh, space. They literally jumped and you know they were hovered in the air and then they came back to the earth. So it was like that. So it was don't think that it, it was a full fledged aircraft or those kind of thing. You know, it was not like that. It was a very experimentalized uh, structure which they used using wooden planks and all those things. But it was the start of civil aviation. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it uh, it was done in a very dusty, sandy North uh, North Carolina strip. North Carolina of U United States of America is a very dusty town. You know, if, wherever you go, you will find only dust and you know sand, uh, just like Rajasthan of India. So in that sandy strip, hundred years ago, they made this first attempt. Okay. So if you can just see, scroll down. Uh, then I think in the third paragraph you are going to see that uh, civil aviation as a concept civil aviation you know what is civil aviation what is the spelling of civil aviation civil aviation civil aviation what is civil civil means civil dress uh, sometimes you know you might be hearing some uniformed officers saying that go in civilian dress what is civil 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 means anything related to the citizens, normal citizens of a country. So, this aviation is civil, civil aviation. That means the aviation in which normal people could be transported from one point to another. So, this was not at all a concept, okay. During, uh, I would say, the World War I, I think from 1914 to 1918, uh, almost three to four years, it became an apparent that the aircrafts could play an important role in national defense. At a, as a result, this period saw the production of the first combat aircraft at, and the construction of by, by the countries involved in the conflict by many military airports, especially Germany. What they did is that uh, they used, uh, they created, they molded an aircraft where they uh, many people could sit on this sideways unlike what we see now like rows of seats no it was not like that only wooden planks were like uh, were, sit, were fixed on the edges of the aircraft so that you know they could sit so this will be taking and they will airdrop men from on the enemy land germans used to do that uh, um, uh, and you know this uh, Nazi, all these kind of people when they used to fight, especially Germans, they used to, while flying over enemy territory, they will use to airdrop men. So, to airdrop men, first they need to create some seats where they could sit. So, this was one thing. And then following the war, that means after the war, 1918, some of these military airports remained op un operational and converted in for civilian use yes there it become became useful for civilian purpose for example uh, how i can explain to you is that these military airports for example just imagine just it's just imagination if calicut airport 100 years back it was used for military purpose only jet aircrafts and all those things were used and after the war right after the war what happens they convert it, in, it into a normal airport where you and me could buy tickets and get into an aircraft and go so it was a good thing because all these airstrips it was not at all a proper airport only a few meters like 800 meters or like one kilometer of airstrip 
where they could hardly you know have a smooth landing they will take off and then they will uh, you know land that's it no terminal nothing as we see in calicut airport or in cochin airport you will be having a building no there is nothing like that as such okay so it was done like that and initially a local responsibility after world war 1 Uh, airport develop uh, airport development become a mix of military and commercial and private res um, and uh, private responsibilities that means uh, i'll take an example of an indian airport uh, for example goa airport uh, still is used by the uh, by the uh, air force uh, for uh, their own purposes like they will uh, um, use their jets and you know uh, sukhoi and all those things there because there is no other space uh, air space uh, for the air force uh, to uh, to use their aircrafts so i think um, from morning 12 to evening 4 that uh, that few hours are used by the air force uh, to handle their aircrafts and then after 4 4 pm it's been converted into a normal airport where any uh, any air, uh, airlines can come and land so this four hours dedicated only for um, you know uh, for air force like this many airports around the world maybe i think uh, only after 47 1947 india uh, got its independence and then i think during the 60s uh, this uh, air india was formed only then we had proper normal functioning airports before that i'm talking about the world who actually got independence much before us like the united states they had converted uh, airports for a semi use like used by the military and also by the civilian um, authorities so it goes like that so uh, you know and the time goes like that between 1925 and 1940 air transportation grew steadily in several countries and in 1940 the outbreak of world war 2 countries involved in the conflict constructed large number of air bases some of them being planned as to be useful for civil aviation after the war world war 2 was very short like in the 40s it, it was in the 40s but in, uh, during the those era uh the civil aviation airports like which was used for by uh, uh, dual kind of purposes they were established airports i would like to say in us uh, uk all these kind of advanced countries they used this airports also for uh, uh, arm, uh, military aircrafts and also for civilian aircrafts World War II was like very uh, few, like uh, only few years, one or two years. It had its uh, time span, not like World War One. And then it goes like that. So here, here, here it is for uh, the history of aviation. So it is a brief thing. You don't have to, you know, scratch your ha um, hair uh, to learn this thing. history of aviation if you can just go through the first two pages of a textbook that itself will give you a proper idea of what the history of aviation is you can you can ask me the question later on right so there it goes and then now we'll talk about the importance of uh, aviation aviation has been important for us in the current situation especially now you see our stranded indians are there uh, in abroad countries like you know middle east and all those countries now we can very easily because countries are interconnected we can smoothly bring um, our our indians back from other lands uh, using the air network imagine there was no proper airports in different parts of the world and also in india if there was no proper airports all this couldn't have been possible so now we'll share the data of the um, of the air transportation industry of today every year more than 2.4 billion just see the uh, i mean uh, number of people using the 2.4 billion uh, people 
uh, travel by air flying more than 1.5 billion kilometers actually kilometers is an Indian phrase uh, in uh, we use the actual phrase is nautical miles okay so 2.4 billion people have flown uh, flown for 1.5 billion kilometers that is huge I would say there are approximately 270 international airlines in the world and more than many national and regional ones there are at least 1500 major airports in the world overall airports generate more than 32 million jobs it is a rough figure I would say this is 2020 it has provided a lot of jobs I am not talking about uh, the data till March post March we don't know what is going to happen uh, the data will come out uh, but it is a temporary phase I would say but before that it has given direct and indirect jobs direct jobs the one you would be opting for like an airport staff CSA that is actually a direct uh, job uh, uh, by the airline and indirect jobs are like uh, for the loaders the, the, uh, the personals who are in, involved in uh, carriage of bags from uh, from uh, to and fro from the uh, aircraft deck to the terminal so this uh, uh, this passage what they use uh, the people involved in this thing the blue collar workers we call them uh, as uh, uh, they get indirect uh, job benefits like uh, they, they won't get any benefits as what the direct job workers will do but it is also an employment uh, it, they are on a contract basis so they are saying in this textbook it has been given that 32 million jobs right okay so it goes like that so i think uh, for today we will uh, wind up and uh, in tomorrow's class we will start with the actual uh, technical side like the air side and you know terminals and all those things okay so thank you for listening namaste